The surgery takes between 60 and 90 minutes. Bisegmental operations last a little over two hours. We make an incision a little to the left of the navel. We don't go straight through the bowels, but around them. We push them aside, and then we go in between the two layers of soft tissue that surround the bowels and line the inner part of the belly. We reach the spine through the front of the body. This is where the big blood vessels, veins and arteries can be found running alongside the spine to supply blood to the legs. This is the part of the surgery that takes the longest, around 10 to 15 minutes. That's because we need to expose them carefully in order to locate them. We don't want to harm them on our way to the spine. The blood loss during the surgery is quite low. It is about the same amount of fluid as a glass of water. We then insert small hooks between the fifth vertebrae of the lumbar spine and the sacral bone. This is all done approaching from the front. We can then clear out the disc space in between. We take out all the soft disc tissue so that the bare bone is in front of us. Next we drill a small channel into the bone. After having drilled the channel, we insert the prosthesis from the front. The prosthesis itself has a rough surface so that the bone will grow over the surface of the implant. This occurs within the first six to eight weeks after surgery. During this time, you should avoid extreme movements of the spine. Please refrain from rotations or twisting, from deep bending and from heavy lifting. During the years following surgery, many patients develop an increasing stiffness of the spine in operated and in non-operated parts. As a result, the implant gradually loses its function during a lifetime. By the same measure, it will be less stressed and hence less worn out. We know from biomechanical tests of the prostheses presently on the market that high and long-term stress do not lead to any significant wearing of the implant. We therefore assume that we do not have to discuss loosening or deterioration of implants in the spine. Whereas this is indeed an issue in knee and hip replacement, it does not seem to be relevant in artificial disc replacement. There have been attempts at artificial disc replacement since the 1950s. A real advance in this field has, however, only been achieved since the introduction of S.B. Chateté 15 years ago. Since then, the biomechanics of these implants have constantly been improved. The later models now show significant advantages to the earlier ones. Among other things, we've learned that the implant must have a specific design. Our aim is to offer implants that do indeed work like a real joint. This is done by using modern technology to deliver a therapy that successfully imitates physiological conditions. At Stenham we have excellent facilities that allow us to do almost any type of surgery. Not only do we have surgery theaters of the latest technology with all necessary equipment, but we also have post-operative intensive observation facilities to ensure proper subsequent care and monitoring. In summary, we have ideal circumstances here to serve our patients according to their needs. Any damage to the blood vessels can result in a rapid loss of blood. It is possible this may cause a blood clot to develop in the veins. 
even after surgery. This is called thrombosis. A lung embolism could develop if the blood clot were to travel to the blood vessels in the lung. To prevent thrombosis, you need to be out of bed quite soon after surgery. Physical therapists and nurses will help you to get up and be as active as possible on the first day after surgery. You will also be given daily heparin injections to prevent thrombosis. The urethra, the tube that links the kidneys to the bladder, can in theory also be harmed, and that is why we keep a close eye on it. After the first six to eight weeks, you can slowly increase your physical activities depending on the amount of pain you are still experiencing. After your surgery, you will have a certain amount of surgical pain from the incision alone. The bowels also don't like to be moved and will stop functioning for some time. The pain from the incision should decline after two to three weeks. However, this may vary from patient to patient. There is also what we call damage pain. This is caused by spreading the segment. While inserting the prosthesis, we have to give it more height than it normally has. That causes a certain amount of damage to the soft tissue surrounding the spine, ligaments and fatty tissue. All these structures have to adapt to the new situation afterwards. This can take up to two or three months post-op or even longer. We hope this covers all of your questions as far as the surgery is concerned. Coming to the problem of back pain, what is the actual cause of back pain and of its related pain that radiates into arms and legs? There are many pain sensors in the back. They are located not only in the discs, but also in the little joints along the spine, in tendons, muscles, and ligaments. Back pain, mostly chronic pain, can therefore have many facets. It can be provoked by many different factors and stay for a very long time. There is one specific indication for implanting an artificial disc. This is when we can distinguish, by clear diagnostic indicators, that the pain suffered is generated by a deficient disc. Eventually, this disc will cause subsequent problems to the patient. I worked at the orthopedic center of the Charité in Berlin for over 10 years. I've consequently been in close contact with the development of the SB Charité at this institute. Since that time, I've been employed in artificial disc replacement. A good spinal surgeon should be very understanding of the patient's pain. This is the most important initial requirement to tackle the patient's problem and to actually understand it. The next important step is to find out where the pain originates from. This must be worked out together with the patient to then jointly work on a surgical solution for the problem. Obviously, a good spinal surgeon must be skilled at operating on the spine. Surgical technique is very important. Also, what follows the surgery, the post-surgery recovery, the management of complications, all this makes a good surgeon.